Can I suggest we keep gunfire to a minimum? Uh, is yeah. this training just started? Is it over? I mean, I just got online. Yeah, so we're actually <laughs> just starting. Right time. Oh, beautiful. Yep, yep. Okay, well, so yeah. Uh, gonna... Where are we heading to? Uh, uh, BR. Well, yeah. So we're actually going to sit at series. Um, we're going to be testing out some of the armory stuff later on for our leadership that's online, and just so everyone who's not currently leadership. Um, can kind of just see what's up and just we can't use BR4 just because uh, we can't drop our, our assets and whatnot. So we'll just kind of be in a secluded area of the continent for now at a platoon point. Okay, so welcome everybody to the SKL Officers Academy inspired armory training. As I've been kind of saying these last few minutes, um, this is going to be a lot of stuff for those of you who maybe have uh, solo fits and kind of want to get to know your army a bit better. Um, it's a lot for SKLs, officers that are here and who will be watching the, uh, the recording later on, again, to kind of get to know the armory, um, SKLs policies around it, and best practices and whatnot. So, first off, uh, what is the armory? It's kind of the beginning question. The armory houses all of our deployable assets, like our anvils. It holds our modules, such as the ones you guys might have seen for uh, decreasing the amount of nanites it takes to spawn things. It houses our bastions, our orbitals, etc. Um, so it's a really, really neat tool. Um, it's been around for about as long as I remember, um, though in, as far as uh, total planet site history goes, it's actually a relatively new addition to the game. Um, so to talk more a bit about it, I'm going to get you guys to open up your menu screens if you guys want to follow along, and you guys can go to your outfit page. Um, and at the top of that page, you will see three tabs. You'll see your home screen, which is what you'll see when you first open it up. And the tab right beside that is the armory, which is the screen we'll be looking at for the next little bit here. I'm going to kind of go and, and talk uh, about it top down. Uh, as much as I can, so you can kind of follow along. And uh, yeah, so here we go. The first thing that you'll see on the top right um, is our resources. So our green, our blue, our purple, uh, those three lines, they're different types of resources. And you, if you kind of look down at the different resources, or the different assets rather, uh, you'll see the different requirement costs for each type of resource. Um, if you, actually, if you hover over each of the colored bars for each resource, you'll see the uh, the actual names, um, but they're weird, and so most people, um, at least in, in SKL, just call them by their color, just green, blue, purple, um, which is nice. Um, yeah, so beside those resource and their names, you'll kind of see uh, how much of each we have. Right now in SKL, we have everything completely full up, um, and right beside that is our uh, income per minute. And very briefly, income per minute is simply a factor of how many, uh, how many of each base of what type uh, we hold in our outfit's name. Um, and yeah, so depending on how many that is, our income per minute of a particular resource goes up. So it's, it's pretty nice and uh, yeah. So under that, we have our war assets, which is the, the shiny thing that most people, I think, look at when they, they come into the armory. Uh, and this is going to be our bulk of our deployables and such. Here we have our anvils, we have our steel rain, citadel shield, orbital strike, and colossus heavy tank. I'm going to kind of give a brief uh, overview of what each one does very quickly. I think most people are, are, are pretty familiar with them, um, but just bear with me so we kind of cover all of our bases. Each anvil, and again, you, so for all of this stuff, everything here, you can hover over and get a, a short description of what it does. And um, for the anvil specifically, what we're going to talk about, it actually tells you uh, what you can spawn from it. But for the anvils, as a uh, member of an outfit with the right uh, permissions, so for SKL, those are broodlords and up, for the anvil specifically, you can right-click on a map or mini-map, um, and quick tip for those of you that don't know, you can hit your left alt button um, kind of while you're, you're spawned in anywhere and you will free your mouse up from the screen which allows you to go to your mini map and right click and place waypoints and all of that. Um, right click your map or a mini map 
which will bring you a drop down menu and you can drop these these nifty tools all of these assets and the anvil specifically will spawn a specific vehicle um, of which type again you can see for the descriptions blade anvils being able to deploy a flash or a javelin if you happen to be nso the medium being the harasser ant or the lightning um, and the heavy anvils, which is the bread and butter of our uh, mostly SKL used anvils, is going to be our heavy anvil, which spawns in a Sunder or our MBT, which for here in VS is our uh, Mag Rider, or again, if you're NSO, it's your Chimera. So that's a very brief overview of anvils. Next up, we have Steel Rain. Steel Rains are actually really interesting. Um, they allow a squad leader, and you have to be a squad leader in order to use this. Um, they allow you to right click and deploy a steel rain anywhere on the map, which then after 30 seconds will take all of your squad that's not currently in a vehicle and drop them all in drop pods. Uh, the most meta use is for dropping 12 maxes anywhere you need them immediately. It's really nice for, for breaking up fights, killing spawns, um, or just having a nice uh, force multiplier to charge into the fighting. Um, and actually, for the longest time, they were pretty broken, um, where, you know, something like 11 out of, of 12 of your squad would be stuck up in the air, uh, sitting on top of the drop pods, not in them. Uh, and recently, within the last couple of patches, they fixed that to basically be 100% success rate. So. Um, you know, we've been having fun with that. It's a lot of fun. If you're a squad leader and you have permissions for that, or you're in a solo fit, uh, definitely try that out when you have a squad. Um, and I should mention that this works whether um, your members in your squad are part of your outfit or not. It just takes everyone that's in your squad and deploys them 30 seconds who are that's not a quick members. question. Yeah. Unless yeah. they're in armor. Yes. Quick question for you. I noticed that different levels of officers have different privileges. For instance, I guess I'm a broodlord, so I can do, uh, you know, anvils and some permissions for for some other things, but I can't do a steel rain, right? Can you say what levels get all the permissions? Yeah, so very quickly, the broodlords, and this is, of course, for all the SKL ranks, but for broodlords... They have access to the anvils and the modules, as far as um, the assets go in the armory. Um, Hive Lord and up, they have access to uh, all of the assets, so the Steel Rain, the Citadel Shield, the Oral Strike, uh, and the Colossus Heavy Tank, if I remember correctly. Um, Swarm Lords for sure have access to the entire armory. Uh, there's certain things within the armory page that can only be accessed, um, you know, Abathur Plus, Abathur Up. Um, but as far as the assets go and deployable things, everything is accessible by the high lords and up. So does that Thank answer you. your question? Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Wonderful. Um, yeah, so that's the Steel Rain. Moving on to the Citadel Shield. Citadel Shields are the massive uh, shields that drop down from the sky and form a nice bubble shield. Um, interestingly, if you hover over the description, it says deploys a massive bubble shield that blocks projectiles from the outside. That's actually not true anymore. There was a recent change um, that made it so that it also blocks projectiles from the inside. So these are no longer uh, walls that you can shoot out of. They are simply walls that you can move into and out of, but it blocks all projectiles of every kind. Um, and so they're, they're kind of nice for setting a barrier, um, but that's it. It's, it's, not, uh, it's, it's not for something you'd shoot rockets and such out of. Moving on, everybody's favorite, the Orbital Strike. This handy uh, Orbital Strike will come down from the sky, I think it's about 15-20 seconds after you deploy it, um, and yeah, for, for lack of better words, it makes a huge explosion in a set radius, it destroys uh, all maxes that are under it, it does uh, damage and flings vehicles that are under it, um, and uh, yeah, so it does you know, quite a bit of damage. I will say a quick tip, if you see an orbital strike and it's on top of you, um, get under a tree or a building or anything really. Um, it'll mitigate some, if, if not most, of the, of the damage from it and keep you from uh, flying 500 meters into the sky and then uh, killing you from impact. So that's the orbital strike. 
And then the Colossus tank. Uh, this one is uh, underused somewhat, but uh, kind of a, a niche tank. Heavy tank with a huge cannon, which can damage uh, Bastion hardpoints. Uh, we'll talk about the Bastion here in a second. But the Colossus takes, you know, it's not, uh, it's not cheap to make, but it's fairly powerful. Best run with armor columns and such. And um, yeah, is overall it's not uh, it's it's not as as tactical say as a, a steel rain or or elbow strike or heavy angle, but you can do some really really nice things with it, and it's nice for like I said armor columns or uh, bringing fear into the hearts of your opponents uh, with the the huge tank. Hey horse. Yep. There is a question in Platoon Chat about the Citadel Shield, what the radius is, and, and how to measure it and everything. Can we go over that real quick? Oh yeah, for sure. Let me check that. Shoot, I missed quite a few things. Okay. Um, how do you know the radius of the Citadel Shield? I believe it is... I mean, I was basically just asking, when you go to place the Citadel Shield, how do you know what the um, radius of it's going to be from the center point? Yeah, so I yeah, believe... Yeah, do you have an overlay or something? Because I've seen where people intersect that. It's got a 75-meter really radius, well. and people people have all their tricky ways to do it. The one that I've heard that seems the most simple is you put down a personal waypoint somewhere, um, and you measure out 75 meters from that, and that's, like, where you want the edge of the Citadel Shield to be. You put your personal waypoint, you go 75 meters away, and that's where you drop it. Um, but that's the simplest way for me. I know other people have other little tricky ways to, to measure it out, and... Um, and get it to, to line up right. And grenades and C4 and everything like that do bounce off of the Citadel Shield. Even like res grenades and stuff. So if you're a medic standing in the Citadel Shield, you're trying to throw it somebody outside of it, it'll bounce right off and come back in your face. Vehicles can drive through, people can walk through, but any kind of projectile or grenade or explosive or anything like that will bounce off and come right back at you. So could you make it like a C4 wall on it or something? It'll bounce back inside. It won't go outside of the, the Citadel Shield. Whatever side you're on, that's where the C4 will land. It won't go, penetrate the C4 or the Citadel Shield and go out or in, from no matter, depending on where you're standing. Does it prevent locking? I don't think it does. It just okay. blocks like the missile or so whatever. It, yeah. It would block the so missile. I don't think it prevents the actual lock on, but it blocks. Yeah, you can lock and then step through fire. Yep, exactly. Okay, yeah, it's I, I'm gonna keep the uh, platoon chat open at this point, so I'll be able to catch any any questions there. Um, yeah, but does that kind of answer everybody's questions for Citadel Shield? Awesome. Yep, seeing a platoon chat. Okay, cool. All right, bastions. So like we were saying, Colossus can damage the bastion hard. Oh, hello. Hello, hello. There you go. <laughs> huh, interesting. Okay. Um, so I was going to have my platoon chat open, but for whatever reason, it doesn't let me also talk at the same time. Um, so I'll need to keep people, uh, have people keep me apprised of questions in platoon chat and stuff so that I can stop talking and answer those. Um, and actually, for a brief moment, since we're here, we're just about through the, the assets and stuff here. Um, Prozan, do you mind if I throw you into Delta so we can open that up? Awesome, sounds good. Alright, throw some people in. Feel free to switch squads again if you felt like staying a particular one. And there's the description I've been using, Prozan. Okay. So with that finished, uh, Bastion. It is our super carrier. It is a carrier that can spawn um, our faction's ESF for all members that jump into it. Um, and I should say, when I say members, um, I'm specifically referring to outfit members. Bastions are cool, um, but they have the unfortunate case of not being accessible um, or let, rather the gun seats and the uh, passenger seats for sights and such for Vanu, um, only our outfit members can sit in those. So 
if you see a bastion, check which faction or which uh, outfit it is. If it's yours, awesome. You should see a spawn in your spawn list, um, and you can jump inside. Um, if you don't see that, it's probably another outfit. Uh, and actually, quick uh, quick tip again for the Bastion, Fscale does provide um, Bastion requests. We have a Bastion request channel on our Discord, so if you're interested in flying this Magnificent Beast, uh, definitely, definitely check that out. Okay, last two parts for overview for the uh, Armory page itself. We have our uh, Expeditions. And I'm going to spend like 30 seconds on this because, you know, just as, as far as the description goes. Um, expeditions, it's basically you put in a lower type of resource in and you get a higher type of resource out. Um, so it's, it's pretty nice, especially if you're a solo fit or something, kind of want to uh, rack up some of those resources. You make a bunch of green, you put in a, a Synthium Expedition, you get some blue out, you get enough blue, you put in a... Uh, polystellarite expedition, you get some purple out, so it's really nice. Um, so that said, uh, I'm going to hand it over to Kasami for a second. Kasami, if that's Good okay. evening, SKL. I will be starting an oh, infantry yeah, platoon for this pre-alert over here on Indar. Mass invites will go out in about 10 seconds. Thank you. As far as the expeditions, um, Hive Lords and above can craft them, Swarm Lords and above can pick them up. I suggest all of you Swarm Lords out there, when you first log into the game, you land in Sanctuary, which is where you pick up the expeditions, take a look at our resources, see where they're at, see if we need to pick anything up, because chances are we have a full array of expeditions that are ready to be picked up. It's very rare that I see that we don't have an, exp an expedition ready to go. So just be a little bit conscientious about that, and if you see that we're low on, on Blueium and we have one ready to go, pick it up so we've got resources still flowing in. It helps keep things moving in the armory. Yep. Yes, exactly. it's greenium, bluium, purpoleum. I love it. <laughs> wow. Those are those are rage words, and I just kind of picked them up and they stuck. It's better than saying what they actually are called, though. Yeah, forget that. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that's that's expeditions in a nutshell. Um, last thing I want to give an overview on before we kind of set onto something else here is our modules. And these are fun little things that give discounts for a specific type of uh, vehicle, or they give a specific upgrade um, on a base. So if you hover over uh, inf infantry health regen, for example, um, all soldiers within that hex, it calls it a region, um, basically the same thing, but all soldiers within that hex or region get a small amount of health regeneration uh, regardless of what implants they have, um, whether they have any health regenerating implants. I've heard, this isn't um, entirely confirmed, but from what I've heard, it's, it's the equivalent of a, um, a health regeneration one implant, so it's a very small amount, um, but you know, we have a whole lot of resources in, in SKL, so we might as well have it up at max. And um, because we have them, you know, no reason not to use them. So that one's handy there. Um, I'm not going to go through all these modules. There's quite a few of them. Um, but one of the other ones that I, I do want to talk a bit about is the mobile armor discount and the support vehicle discount. Uh, specifically for our broodlords and up out there, we have these two modules, which are going to be a couple of our most useful ones, especially when you're forming an armor column or when you're asking your squads platoons to pull multiple Sundays or Lightnings, um, these can help, especially the uh, non-membership uh, players in your platoon uh, spawn those. And so specifically, again, if you look at the, or if you hover rather over each discount's name, the Mobile Armor uh, has a 30% discount for Lightnings and MPTs, or our Mag Rider, uh, or Chimera and the support is for ants and sunderers. Um, so those are really, really nice, two really, really nice modules. And like I said, I'm not going to go through all of these just to save on time, um, but in your own time, feel free to hover over these and have a look at what each of those does. Yeah, feel free to use the modules. We, we get so much green in that we keep a solid flow of that coming in. So use the modules, throw them down anywhere you see a fight, even if 
your platoon specifically is not there, throw down a health regen, you know, throw down armor discounts, air discounts, whatever, just to help out the faction.